This month on the farm, we now have other local farmers using our mill for their grain. We'll be having our first corn harvest here at the distillery and starting a new product, and we'll also be finishing up on a canola field from last month. Welcome back to the farm. You can find a link to this series in the description or in the comments below. And of course, check out the channel page for other farming series you might like. It's October here at Shady Country Distillery in FS22. And this is actually not our field or our harvester. We just finished doing a, a contract out on this person's field here. And yeah, just finished harvesting the sorghum for him. And we're going to go haul the sorghum to a local grain mill which uh, we'll get to that in just one second here because there's something to tell you about that there. Then we'll be getting back to our farm. At our farm, let's see, I planted canola last month. After last month's episode, your, you know, the uh, last episode, I uh, got canola planted on one of our fields. And of course, our, our corn, our corn will be ready to harvest this month. We'll also be fertilizing the canola that I planted last month. First, we need to deliver this. Uh, this is the entire, yeah, this is the entire sorghum harvest from that field. It all fit into this trailer. Yeah, this is not our equipment. This is uh, loaner equipment for the contract because uh, I was able to pay a small fee and rent a, at least a larger harvester for the job. Now, this is not paying a whole lot, but there's an interesting outcome of this particular contract. And here, I will show you. So here's the contract here. You can see it's 80% done. We're not getting paid a whole lot of money, but that's not the interesting part. The interesting part is where we deliver it to. You need to deliver the sorghum to the old American grain mill. Old American grain mill. Yep, that is right there. That's ours. Apparently, uh, word of our business has gotten around and other yeah, local farmers are using our, uh, our grain mill. So business is booming, you could say. So yeah, we're actually running uh, this harvest that we just completed for uh, the farmer over there. And this is actually going to our farm, to our grain mill. And uh, yeah, so you can definitely say uh, production is uh, booming at uh, Shady Country Distillery. I just wanted to show you that in the screens. Uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing. In case you wonder, why is he doing this? Uh, what's he doing with this big trailer? Well, we're going to take this to our grain mill. We'll be processing this for them. And uh, this month, yeah, we're going to be harvesting our corn and we're going to be fertilizing our canola field. There's been a couple small changes on the farm, not really small, not, not really changes, but uh, I have been managing production. We sold quite a bit of moonshine last month. It was a big month after last uh, after the last episode. And also we've uh, I, fit, I have fit new tires on our tractor. Uh, that's to aid in the fertilizing. So you, when you see our John Deere, you'll see it's got narrow wheels on it. We're going to have to do some fertilizing with it uh, on our canola field this month and uh, uh, next year we'll have to do some as well so we may be swapping tires on it some more here and there so we're going to run this to our farm and then we're going to return this equipment and get to work alright we're pulling up to our grain mill now and I think I'm going to have to move our tipper out of the way this is big equipment we're moving through here this is a lot of grain yeah the entire harvest fit in this tipper okay no ours is not in the way I must have moved it I have moved a couple things here you can see, oh yeah, that's right. Our tipper's out there in the field. We're ready to start uh, harvesting our field. Uh, I had some extra time early this month, and so I decided to take on this contract that, uh, well, we're dealing with here right now. So let's get this open. There we go. All right, and we're to get this offloaded here, get that uncovered. There we go. I had to pull back around. For some reason, I had to turn around to get it to, uh, well, our, uh, yeah, our, the, the grate here that we dump it in is kind of small and off to the side, so. All right, 90% completed and finished. All right, and that was, uh, that's pretty much all the grain. There was really nothing left over. All right, so yeah, that contract's finished. We can, uh, Let's go close this up. I will make sure that this grain gets processed for them. So we now have, uh, not only are we producing our own moonshine for uh, our business, but we've got enough production to cover uh, customers. So uh, I'll make sure to get that processed the way they want it to get done. And we'll no doubt get paid handsomely for that. You know, that's the great uh, thing of, you know, doing enough business that we can take on business for uh, other farmers. Let's go ahead and just... Uh, Let's just leave this tractor here. Let's turn this contract in so we can get on with other things. All right, $6,000. Collect. 
All right. There we go. So we've uh, I've spent quite a bit of money. Yeah, so you see we've got $82,000 including what we just got. Well, definitely spent some money. Um, we've got a couple new things here. You'll notice a new, uh, well, you may notice there's a new silo tank here. Yeah, because we're going to have more harvest coming in on our farm. Hey, our farm's just grown a lot. You know, uh, recently we put in this extension tank here, but it's really not that big, and it's going to fill up soon. We have big harvest coming in from our fields, including a corn harvest this month and soybeans next month. And I'm thinking, you know what? I went ahead and got to jump on it, and we have a bigger silo extension tank here. Um, I think it's the same brand as this. It's a Polish manufacturer of silos. It's just different color is all. But uh, so that's new. Also, I sold our old fertilizer spreader and invested in uh, in this fertilizer spreader here. The sprayer, it's a little more expensive. It's going to be a little pricier, but uh, well, it's going to be necessary. Just it's necessary for the fertilizing that we're doing. Right. So. This month, yeah, we've got uh, we've got this corn to harvest. I say, let's get on that. Let's get our uh, corn harvested. Oh, but you know what? Before we can start, we don't have a corn header for the harvester. Yeah, we don't. Ooh, I think could use a wash, huh? Let's get in here and... Uh... All right, so let's pull this over here. Let's spray this off, and we're going to park the header somewhere. We're going to have to lease a corn header. That's what we're going to do. I've spent quite a bit of money recently. I'm not keen to buy a header. I mean, we'll be harvesting corn again next year, but that's that's next year. For now, we just have this small cornfield. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna, gonna get our harvester uh, washed off here, and we're gonna lease a corn header for this harvest. But yeah, let's get this uh, let's get this cleaned off here. All right, so let's have a look at. Uh, Let's park this header here, and what we're going to do is, I guess, do we drive the harvester to the shop, or do we uh, try to figure this out? Should we trailer this there? So there's technically no need to take the harvester to the shop, but the thing is, we're going to lease a header, right? We need a way to get the header here, you know? We could take a trailer, but we would need a way to get the trailer, or, or the header, I should say, onto the trailer. So I'm trying to think, is there any way we could do that without the harvester? Do we really have to transport the harvester to the shop just to lift and move the header? And I think so. I don't think there's a way around it. So it's just going to be, uh, I think it's just going to be a slightly slow trip to the shop. Um, I, I think any, any uh, way I could figure out that may make this faster may end up taking longer in the long run because i got to figure out you know, how to get the harvester there and back. And I think in that time, I could have driven there. So I'm going to drive this to the shop. We're going to lease this a corn header. All right, we are here at the shop. And we're going to have a look at what it'll cost to lease a corn header for this. Of course, we'll buy one. But right now, yeah, we'll have one for next season. For now, I'll just park here and have a look at the store here. Oh, and yeah, this right here, this is some sprayer, uh, fertilizer sprayer, uh, liquid fertilizer. That's the word I'm looking for. There's some liquid fertilizer. We filled our, our new sprayer with this and I uh, need to, next time we're here, next time we have a truck or something here, we need to take these home with us. Okay. Corn headers. We need to find one that'll go good with our rustle mash. It's a small field, so it doesn't have to be big or anything. Affordability is, uh... Well, I don't want to pay a whole lot. Well, here's a Rustle Mush. I suppose any of these would work with it. I mean, that one would too. I mean, that's a Rustle Mush. It'd be cheaper, no doubt. Well, let's uh, just lease this one then. It'll work. All right. Lease for, yeah, basically nothing. All right. Yeah, it doesn't match the exact model of our harvester, but it's a rustle mash. It should work. But we do want to make sure, before we go hole in this home, we want to make sure it works. So before we leave the parking lot, we want to put it down, make sure it doesn't hit the ground or anything like that. We want to make sure that the machine can run it. That would be the wrong button, of course. There we go. And 
We can we run it is the question. Yeah, it's a little slow to move. I was running it for a second there because it was a little slow to accelerate, but it was going. All right, um, we're gonna go without a trailer. We got wide enough roads here in Kalinovka. I think we'll be good. We will hit on our beacon lights though, so they know we're coming. I'm not sure for the pedestrians here, but yeah, um, it was a little slow to move there, uh, but it did accelerate. That's something I always test. It's it's pretty handy to test that in the parking lot. And that will let you know if you're uh, if you if you spool up the header. Uh, make sure your machine can push it. Make sure it's not taking more engine power than your harvester can put out. I have. If you, if you get a harvester with too big a header and you crank it up, it won't be able to accelerate and it'll be useless and it's better to find that out in the parking lot of the shop than when you get back to your farm. So let's get this back to the farm. All right, finally we're back to our little farm road here. That was quite, uh, it was kind of a time, uh, kind of a timely drive from the, the shop there. Yeah, it, it took a minute, is what I'm trying to say, to get back uh, to the farm. Uh, hopefully, I mentioned, you know, that uh, we'll need our, I want to have our own corn uh, corn harvester header for next season. Yeah. And more than that, more than just our own corn header, I'd like to have a whole new machine. A more powerful machine that could take a larger header. Of course, that would actually be ideal. That's what I want to do. I want to wait until we can get uh, a larger machine in general. Because next season, we're going to have a lot more corn to harvest than, th than just this little bit up here. Here is where we've just sectioned off this field. If you recall, when we started here, this was a 5.7 hectare field, which is sectioned off into five small sections. Next year, we're going to have uh, a lot more corn to harvest. And, well, we'll get into that when we plant it. We'll plant it. We'll be planting it next year. Next spring, we'll be planting our corn. But for now, let's get... Are we good to go? I think so. Yeah, we're good to go. Let's get harvesting on our corn here. Yeah, the harvester is pretty slow to move. But uh, yeah, you know, we checked it at the store and it's gonna get going. Let's get it. See, we're still not up to speed yet. Uh, I had to stop it there. Let's get it back going. It's getting up to speed. Yeah, they just took it a second. It's getting up to speed. We'll be good. See, we just got this little bit of corn here this year. Next year, we're gonna have, well, yeah. I think that uh, our new field over uh, over yonder back there, you know, our big eight hectare field, I think we're going to cut it in half, half oats, half corn. Uh, we'll be planting that, of course, in the spring. And this field here, I think we're going to cut down on the way that it's sectioned off. Because right now, obviously, we're harvesting this corn. Uh, next up the field uh, is, uh, some, is a grass area, and then beyond that, next the, month, the next month, we'll be harvesting soybeans. So over the next two months, this whole northern section of the field here is going to be cleared out. We've got bigger equipment now. I think this will be a great opportunity to come through here and tear up this field, you know, uh, plow the field back up and reorder it in some way. We don't need this much grass. And now we have machinery to work a wider area of crops. So uh, we'll have a look at that uh, here coming up. But yeah, this whole section, and let me get the harvester. This whole section that uh, it's ahead of the, hot, the, hot, the harvester up here, sorry. The whole section is ahead of the harvester up there. All that. Here, let's go ahead and get us room to turn around. And maybe you can see what I mean a little bit better. Let's run north up the field here. Oh, and our hopper is filling up fairly quickly. Yeah, this whole section up here, this grass, we'll get rid of this grass, and then the soybeans beyond that, we're harvesting those next month. All right, we've got this. I'm gonna have to actually start working this back toward the uh, tractor with the tipper. Yeah, another reason that we need a bigger harvester, you know, with bigger fields comes uh, the need for more capacity. And it looks like we have just enough room in the hopper to make it back to the tipper. I hope so. Yeah, it looks like we're going to. Yeah, this field go. This field is going to go pretty fast. But uh, yeah, we're going to have. Uh, yep, that was pretty close. Let's go ahead and get this emptied here. 
And so it looks like, yeah, basically we'll be able to make a run down and back on the field. And we'll want to, yeah, I'll have to remember, of course, that we got to return this header so we can try to save money on the lease. So we'll get this off loaded and we'll get out, uh, get back out there, out to work. Actually, while that's, uh, well, that's offloading into the trailer. Oh yeah, so here we got some narrow wheels on the tractor. That's so that we don't hurt our canola. We'll be uh, fertilizing the canola field out here. This down here, this is the canola that I planted after last episode, last month. So it's just started to grow. But as you can see in the bottom right hand corner, it's fertilized 50%. We're gonna wanna come over this and fertilize it. So we have the narrow wheels on the tractor so we don't hurt our crops. Now, on the way back to the tractor, do we have any moonshine to deal with just while I'm walking by? No. Yeah, actually, it looks like we do, but we'll deal with it later, of course. Later, we'll uh, probably have to deliver some moonshine. We'll deal some with our grain mill there as well, as I think we're going to have some sorghum left over from that... Uh, yeah, the sorghum from that harvest that we did at the beginning of the episode. Of course, that's processed for our neighboring farmer but there's going to be some of that that we can use and we'll get started, we'll get our production started on some uh, sorghum flour. And I've said that I want to, yeah, and I do want to have a bakery coming up. Uh, well, we'll get some flour started for when we do have a bakery. That's not yet though. For now, let's get some room here to turn around and we'll be running back down the field here. Oh yeah, I've got the the New Holland is parked down here. Yeah, it uh, it was a pretty tight fit in that road there, but uh, it got down here just fine. It's down here with the Discaro because yeah, we're going to be uh, tearing up this grass here. We don't need all that grass. That area right there is much better served as crops. So like I was saying, we'll be combining that area with you know probably all of this these three fields here. Go ahead and get this. Uh, there we go. So yeah, that's the New Holland's down here with the discard open because that's going to be uh, tilling all of this field up here down here. It'll be great. And you know, I was just thinking of one thing. One thing we can do right now, actually, is we can go ahead and whoops, I think I accidentally. Oh, I think I accidentally hit the gas pedal. And come on. Well, I. <laughs> Right as I started to talk, I think I hit the gas pedal and it cut the cruise control on the harvester. Uh, what we can do is we've got, now that we've got some corn in our tipper, we should take that over to our still and get our still started on moonshine from corn. Because this is the first corn that we've had. We don't have that in our production yet. So we can go ahead and get started on that right now. It's just, uh, I'm gonna harvest this on the way back to the field. Uh, on the way back down the field to the tipper and uh, we'll get that go ahead and we'll get that started in our still. Actually, I was having a look at it on the way back down the field here, kind of running the numbers in my head. I think what we're doing, I think what we're best to do is we're actually best to, uh, let's finish this field first, then we'll take the corn over there. I thought it'd be great to, you know, be like, hey, we can get our corn, you know, our corn alcohol started in our still, but let's wait till the end of the field because there's enough capacity in the still for more than three hoppers worth, I mean, total, from this harvester. So, uh, unless I want to be making multiple trips over there, let's go ahead and what we're going to do is get the whole field harvested and then we'll move it over there so we only have to make one delivery to the still and we can get that started. Yeah, after last episode, uh, between then and now, we actually took... Uh, the largest load of moonshine to the distributor yet. I took a truck with 18. Um, let me straighten this harvester out here. Yeah, 18 cases of moonshine. That was, well, it's October 1st today, and that was at the end of last month. At the end of last month, I took, it was a pretty full load in that truck, in our box truck over there. Yeah, 18 cases of moonshine, and that was pretty, pretty profitable. I did manage to get us a cedar for our air cart, which we'll be using to plant our fields here. Uh, well, the next time we need to plant our fields, 
be it later this year or for sure in the spring, we have a planter now, that, or a cedar, that goes with our air cart. We'll be using that with our new Holland tractor over there. I did get a decent deal on a cedar. Now it's currently over in our big field. It's a, it's a pretty good cedar, it's used. It goes, again, it goes with that Case IH air cart that we have. It's, it's bigger than the one we've got. So it'll be good for working the bigger areas, like for instance, here in this field, where we're opening this up after this harvest. Whoops, I just about started another row and then I remembered, oh yeah, I need to empty this hopper. It, uh, yeah. Well, we'll be looking to upgrade this harvester. I've been looking for a used one to go on sale locally. I haven't seen one yet, but we'll be looking for that because yeah, this small hopper is definitely a hindrance, especially when we're working larger field areas. All right, we are turning down what looks to be yeah, just about the end of this field here. That was a pretty nice little section. And this is going to give us, well, I'm not sure how much is in that tipper. We'll find out. I think we have enough room in our, we might have enough room in our hopper. We'll see to get the rest of this in there. I'm not sure how much is in our tipper over there. We certainly got enough to uh, yeah, supply our still over there with quite a bit of corn for alcohol production for sure. And I can see over there that, yeah, we definitely have quite a few cases of moonshine that's ready at the still. And I forget how much exactly is in our warehouse over there. We'll have to check and see, but we'll certainly be making a run, it looks like, to the distribution point today, which is good because more income, more income is always great been running average of probably uh, I don't know eight or so maybe cases per day of moonshine which is pretty good you know that's about ten thousand dollars it's probably a rough est a decent rough estimate that's definitely good because we have a loan to pay off from the field purchase so let's get uh, should be able to get all of this in one pass with the harvester Yes, we can, if I can get it going again. There we go, it just kind of takes it a minute to get going. Yep, we can get the rest of this. Now, I went ahead and actually I just hired a worker to finish that, uh, that row right there because the hopper's about to fill up. And uh, as long as that's all that's left, literally, it's just that row. We're going to pull up there with the tractor and uh, collect what's in the tank. Hopefully, before his hopper fills up, let's just pull alongside here. Come on, I am here to relieve your tank of any excess grain. Probably just in time. It was probably getting really really full right there that's a pretty sight yeah, that's a nice day out here beautiful day on the farm all right now we can go ahead and run this down to the still let's check the uh let's check the harvester here he shut it down for us yeah yeah we'll get back up the harvester is shut down. We'll deal with that in a few. Let's run this over to the still. So 14 and a half thousand liters. That is almost exactly. I checked in each portion of the still up here. Each of these three parts of the still will hold 5,000 liters of corn. So we have like pretty much exactly enough to fill up our still. And let's see, we've got, is that five, four? Four cases of moonshine. They should be producing it mostly evenly, but because each of the parts is still, they're not perfectly evenly supplied. So yeah, sometimes they produce cases at a slightly different rate. Uh, we're gonna wanna carefully back this in here. And I was, turning the, I was turning the steering wheel the wrong way. There we go, that's better. There we go. Yeah, we should have uh, just enough room in, these, in the still here to yeah, basically empty this entire tipper. So we've got some in there, and this is going to go in this one here. 
and we're going to want to, once I get this dropped off here, we're definitely going to start the production on alcohol from corn. So once we get this dumped in here, we'll be uh, producing simultaneously moonshine from corn, from oats, potatoes, strawberry jam, and apples. That's quite a, it's, it's a pretty good uh, throughput of products running through here. And once we can get that bakery going, we can, we can add bread to that list. So let's get this dumped in here. Now, let's hop out and let's go manage our points, our production points here. So let's hop in here and uh, get this set to uh, start with the corn. Okay, make sure I'm on the right still. So that one, yes. So we're gonna want to turn on corn moonshine. Activate. And this one here, activate. And here, and let's see, what do we need? This is gonna use, oh, how about that? It needs flour, it looks like. It needs flour. Okay, all right, that's good to know. Okay, so moonshine from corn takes flour. All right, well, we've got it turned on on these stills. They won't be producing it because we don't have the flour. Now, that's really good to know. It's good to see, especially since we're at a time uh, when we're about to have a huge empty field that we can plant. In fact, we, you know, if we need, a, say, like wheat for flour, we can plant wheat. Heck, we can plant oats next uh, next year. So we've got plenty of time, and then we're going to be planting oats. Let's head to the mill because I want to check on it anyway. We do have some extra sorghum in there left over from the contract that we put in there. We'll, I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, and let's see what we can do about perhaps producing flour because we're going to want that for the corn. Alcohol, yeah, I totally didn't know exactly what we'd need for that. So let's come in here and check this. Okay, so wheat flour. I guess flour is flour, right? Well, then that's really handy. Let's go ahead and start producing sorghum flour. Yeah, you can see right there on the right side of the screen, we have uh, 2,190 liters that's left over from the harvest. We processed their sorghum uh, for them, and that's what's left. It's our share of the take earlier at the beginning of the video today. So that's, wow, that's so super handy. It just so happens. Boom, there's some sorghum flour for us. Now that's going to produce a decent amount. I'm just looking at the ratio here. That's going to produce over 2,000 liters of flour. And let's see. I wonder what the ratio is on the uh, on the alcohol output side. So looking here at corn moonshine, it takes basically one unit of flour for uh, every... So half a unit of flour for one bottle of moonshine. So this 2,000 flour that we're cranking out here will be obviously quite enough. Yeah, definitely enough. Definitely enough for uh, moonshine. All right, so let's go ahead and park this tipper back here. This is usually where I have the tipper parked because I don't use the input to the mill a lot. Although it looks like as we're gonna be needing flour, we might be needing this more, but first we're gonna need grain to put in there. Yeah, I don't know exactly how long that 2000 liters of uh, uh, flour is going to last us. It looked like from the recipe uh, quite a bit because not a whole lot goes into the moonshine, but again, we'll see in time. Let's get this tractor kitted up to uh, do some fertilizing for us. First, we're going to want to drop off the uh, the front loader. We can just drop that off here. By I parked the crane over here. We'll just park the front loader here with that. There we go. Now... Let's get our nice, sleek, narrow, now narrow wheel tractor over here and set up with the fertilizer. It's already filled and good to go. Now, this definitely was a came at a cost to the farm, but I needed this because uh, with more fields that are being planted, we need to be able to fertilize crops that have already started growing. So, hence, I needed narrow wheels and then... I needed a fertilizer spreader that I could get over the field without also crushing the crop. So this, this sprayer here being totally supported by the tractor, yeah, it won't have big thick wheels that it's dragging across the field. That's why I got us this. Oh, we're gonna have to get to watch that. It, the tractor picked it up and it started to raise it. It was about to hit the roof. So uh, luckily I noted that when I parked it. When I parked it, I noted that I was gonna have to lower that on the three point, otherwise, it would have tried to lift it through our ceiling there. 
All right, now this has got a decent work width of, I believe, about 16 meters. Liquid fertilizer is not cheap. And uh, I think, personally, I think, I mean, it's more expensive than solid fertilizer. And personally, I think it goes faster, too. But, uh, well, we're going to try to make this as efficient as we can. Here's what we're going to do. we got to hit this whole field. I want to give ourselves maximum room. So we're going to run around the outside of the field so that turning around is quicker so I don't get caught in the trees and stuff. You know, no one wants that. Well, we're trying to turn around. With the outside of the field done, we can make clean laps up and down the field on the inside. Let's, I'm going to pull this up just to make sure that, yeah, our, our width is good. Make sure we're using our full work width. And let's get out here and get at it with this. Yeah, I want to keep this. Ooh, it is. Hang on a second. Let me pull this up. I think it's dragging on the ground. Okay, yeah. I lo lowered it. Is that... Hang on. I'm st still trying to decide if that's what was pulling the tractor around. How heavy is this? It's not that heavy. I'm trying to watch where I'm going to, though. You guys probably couldn't see it, but it was pulling the tractor around something nasty. It was swerving on me. I think it was partly dragging in the ground. So what I did was I straightened it out. I mean, I, lower I raised it up a little bit. Sorry. I'm trying to concentrate on this and keep this straight. I think... I had this dragon on the ground there. I think is what that was. Why it was fishtailing on me because it seems to be working fine now. Yeah, this will be. Uh, we can do this in just a few passes, and uh, yeah, because liquid fertilizer is not cheap to buy by any means. But it's going pretty slow. It's. I didn't know exactly what rate it was going to use it at. I was like, I don't know how fast this is going to go, but it looks like we'll get our money's worth. And there we go. That's the outside of the field done, except for this north edge here. Now I'm hoping that uh, I can just leave the narrow wheels on the tractor. I hope that they don't cause any... Uh, I hope they don't cause it to be, like, more difficult to use in any way. This tractor is what, you know, has been our primary, really our only loader. So hopefully can still function just fine like that. I mean, like, yeah. Hopefully the balance and everything is still fine with these wheels. Hopefully it doesn't sink into the ground or do anything strange. Um, we'll see. Because we're going to need narrow wheels on it again um, in the spring when we're planting wheat and oats and corn or whatever it is what we're planting in spring. You know, I think I can actually get this in this last, I, th I think right here is actually the last bit we need to use this on. Yeah, this is just wide enough, I think. Yeah, pretty much. Here, I'll show you on the map. Is this good enough? Yeah, this leaving only the tiniest spots you can see here. Uh, that's of no consequence at all. Just uh, three passes on the field. Up, down, and back. And that job is done. Now we can... Uh, let's go check out our moonshine uh, situation over here. Let's get this off the uh, canola field. So, yeah, this is canola. And, well, I just... I saw how well we sold the canola oil, how much money came from the canola oil. And I said to myself, I was like, you know, if we have any extra room in the fields, I wouldn't mind planting a small canola field because that canola oil was good business. So, yeah, that's why that down there is canola. So let's get this stuff parked. We'll just park this over here for the moment. Oh, yeah, we had... Uh, I restocked our fuel at the farm. I restocked our fuel. We had one little small barrel left. So I got, yeah, just about a... Pretty much just enough to top off the harvester. That's actually why I left this out here. So if you're wondering what that is, that's uh, just a little bit of fuel. I parked it out here. I thought we might need it for the harvester. I'll try to remember that that's out here. Yeah, I restocked our fuel. You can see right there on my left, the uh, the red fuel tanks there. All right, let's get this parked back in here carefully without hitting the roof. We'll want to lower down the sprayer. 
and it does want to drag the ground. Luckily, it's got wheels on the bottom, but it's causing the tractor to swerve a little bit. Uh, that's good right there. Now that it's October also, it's October, so our potato and um, apple production is now done for the year. That's, uh, the apples are July through September, and the potatoes, oops, there we go, are only August through September. So, the potatoes and apples that we've been turning into alcohol, well, as long as we still have some in the still, that will be running, but if we check down here, our potato production should be... Yep, potato production is done for the year. We're still doing strawberries, of course. They are fine. In the, in the greenhouse there. All right, so let's get this over. Yeah, let's park this, and let's head over to the still. We'll just park this somewhere, somewhere out of the way. I'm sure we'll need this again soon. Actually, you know what? Let's take this back over here. I'm going to hook it back up to the front loader, which I'm sure we'll need. All right, let's just park the tractor here for the moment. And let's check in here. How much moonshine do we have? We've got eight, eight cases, eight cases of moonshine in there. Yeah, that's enough to make a trip. Well, if you add in what's down here, it absolutely is. Let's get the truck loaded up. Let's go ahead. Yeah, let's take the box truck. Take the delivery truck because we still have... I'm not uh, currently using, remember our, our old still in the forest, our original still, you know, that we were working in the woods with undercover when we first started here. Well, I've not been adding product to it, but just using, you know, the products that it had, it's still been producing moonshine. It's still got uh, materials left in it. So we're going to want to go up uh, to the woods, is what I'm saying, and check the production on that because it's likely going to have some moonshine output, output for us as well. So, let's get these loaded in here. Let's pull these out. Moonshine. So, we've got eight cases here. Now, if you saw last episode, then you know, unfortunately, I kind of have to just get these in there like that. It's really the only decent way to do this. It's unfortunate, but there's no way to get up in there and move them around. So, I'm going to get these loaded in here. We'll just pretend like they're nice and neatly stacked. And we'll be moving up north to our still in the woods. And see how much total we have to take to the uh, distribution point. All right, so there's eight cases there. Let's just take a little jaunt over here and get these. Is there four or five? There's four here. And they'll, there'll surely be some at our uh, still in the forest as well. Let's get these loaded in here. Oh, and you know what I totally just remembered is this. We need to return this. Whew, boy, I'm glad I thought of that. Uh, hopefully that didn't cost us too much. I'm glad I was just, yeah. So what I did just there is I returned that, uh, the corn header that we leased. Yeah, that's pretty important. Oh, let's close these doors. That's right. I was, I thought I was forgetting something. Let's close these. There we go. And now let's head up to, uh, head up to the forest. Get this strapped back in. All right, so that's 1,200 liters of moonshine, 12 cases. Let's get up north and uh, see if there's any that are still up there. All right, pulling up to our old still in the forest. And yeah, we've got one. I honestly thought there would be more than that. Now let me check on the production here and we'll, we'll see how the production here is going. Um, it looks like here, let's let's have a look at the the whole shebang here. Open production menu, and it looks like okay. That's the last of it. It's got some materials still in here, but it's run out of materials. You can see the red. It's uh, materials missing for so it's out of jam, and it is out of apples, and it's out of oats. It's just got some propane and yeast and a little water left in it. All right, so this is the last. From here, unless I decide to fire this back up for some reason. But until it's that time, that's it for that one. Let's get this closed up. And uh, say bye-bye to the still up here for now. Once we got uh, the rest of the production built at the farm, I've stopped bringing supplies after this one. Alright, so 1300 laser moonshine. Let's get this down to the distribution point.
and get paid. All right, here we are at our distribution point for the moonshine. Let's get this unloaded here. Now, I'll probably have to get out and adjust some of it in the truck. Yeah, it looks like it, most definitely. Yeah, that's the problem. It's thrown in there, but so I'm going to have to adjust it some, but you can't. It's kind of the only way to do it, so I'm going to get this, the rest of this sold. All right, there we go. That is the rest of it sold. So I don't know exactly. I'm messing around with it for a bit, and it kind of... Uh, I don't remember exactly what money we had when we pulled up here, but we're up to 97000 almost $98,000. Oh, that's good. That is a good profit for today. That's really kind of... That's kind of an everyday profit. The amount we brought here is kind of the amount uh, that I've been bringing on a daily basis. So it's pretty good profit. And very soon, we'll have four in motion, you know, in uh, paying off the loans and expanding more on the farm. I'm going to head back to the farm. And there's some more things I want to do for October. And I'll meet up with you guys in the next episode. Thanks so much for following along today. Yeah, I'll see you guys on Friday for what will be our November episode. We'll be for sure harvesting soybeans and who knows what else will be going on at the farm. Until then, I thank you again for watching and for your comments below, your subscription, and I'll see you guys in the next one.